In this Ruby coding exercise, we are asked to work with the array class, and given an array, we're asked to create a method that goes and selects all of the odd elements from the array and then returns those elements as another array. In case that doesn't quite make sense, what essentially that means is, say that we were to take our test data, you can see this up in our our spec test right here. So if I were to take that and say array of one to 10 elements, and in case the syntax is new to you, I am casting this data as an array and I'm using the range class. So I can say one dot dot 10, that will create a range object and then I'm just converting it into an array. So if I run this code right here, you can see that this gives me an array of 10 integers going from 1 all the way through 10. So that gives me the first part of the just some sample data. I'm going to come here and store this in a variable called array. And let me clear off the feedback. And so now what we need to do is select the odd items. So inside of this, if I say array and let's just take one quick look at it because we can visually jump through this. So if I look at this and I say what I want is a new array, so our odd selector method up there, I want it to take this array and say okay one that's odd, two is not odd, three is odd, and then what it would do is it would return something that looks like this. One, three, five, seven and nine. So that's the output. And we can see that if you look at the RSpec test, a huge reason why I write these exercises and I always write a test is one, so we can see them pass, but also just so it gives us good practice on writing tests and how to read tests, because that is something that is very important. So here we're saying that our odd selector method should be able to be called on an array. So the first thing that that tells us is that we need to open up the array class. So we're gonna use monkey patching here. So we're gonna open up the array class and we are going to implement a method called odd selector. And just for review, the reason why we're doing that is because whenever we open up a class, we're able to do something like this, where we can actually call the method on the class. So that is the that gives us some cool things. It'd be the same as doing something like this where you say class string and inside of it say my method and then if I use a some type of string, I then can call my method on it. If we did not use this, and I'll get rid of this for our example, if we did not open up the array class, then we would have to create a me method separate. Then from there, we would then have to pass the array as an argument. And so there's nothing the matter with doing that. We do that plenty of times, but I thought that this would be a really good example for how you could pass that in and how we could open up the class and practice with it. So let me clear off, I should say clear off this one and this one. And now I'm going to here clear this off and I'm gonna create my array class again, except this time I'm gonna give some more values just so we know we're not locked into just using one through 10. So here I'll say one dot dot 100. And this is gonna grab all the items after we've implemented it. So there are a number of ways, just like pretty much every exercise that we do, there are a number of ways of implementing this. Technically, we could do something like this where we take the array and then we iterate over it. So we could, we could create another array. So we could create an array called odds, set that equal to an empty array. And then from there, I could say self dot each do, and say this is an array element, and then add each one of these, so two odds. I could add e and say odd question mark, which is a, a fixed num method that Ruby gives us. And I believe that that should work. So if I run this, you can see here, skipping all the way down, 
you can see, let's see, that did, oh, no, that, that wouldn't work. I made one little mistake. The reason is uh, you need to return the value. You need to tell Ruby what value is getting returned. So here I will save it and let's run it again. And there we can see it says true, false, true, false. So this gives us our Boolean values, but it doesn't actually give us the number we're looking for. So this would be very good if we're wanting to test if something is true or false, but it doesn't actually give us the one, three, five, seven, and nine. And so we would have to also grab the value. So instead of grabbing the Boolean, what we would do is we would say something like this. So we would say E if odd. So let's save this, run it one more time. And now we can see that that works perfectly. It gives us one, three, five, seven, nine, all of that good stuff. And if I come back over here to the tests and run the January 11th test, you can see it passes without any failures. So theoretically, this is fine, but this really is not the best example. This is four lines of code when we really only need one. So I'm going to get rid of this and let's talk about an easier way to do this. With Ruby, in the enumerable class, we have a method called select. And what select will do is it'll actually go through, iterate over a collection, and then it will pick and choose any items that we say that we want returned based on whatever criteria we pass in. So with this, I can say select, and we're gonna use our cool block syntax here and I'm going to say odd, question mark. And so notice, this is the same method. This is that same fixed num method that we're passing in, but what select does is it takes an argument and it can take it as a block that will go through and it will give us true or false values. But instead of doing what we did in the very beginning where it returns the, to, uh, the truth or false value, instead what it does is it returns the value itself, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna save this, let's run it one more time, and look at that, it gives us the exact same behavior. So we were able to, with one line of code, and really just two words, create the exact same behavior that we had to use four lines of code before. So that is perfect. If we switch over here, run our tests again, you can see that it passes with zero failure. So great job. You now know how to go through a array, a array type collection, and be able to select items based on a specific set of criteria and have all of those items returned for you.